All right, so people keep asking me how I made the car ramps that I use in my videos to get my car up. And they're really nothing special. They're actually pretty terrible. Uh, I did record the footage when I made them. And I made them probably about two years ago going on now. Or it'll be two, and a half, it'll be two years coming up soon. So since y'all are asking me how I made them, like I said, they're not perfect. Uh, like I said, since people ask me how I made them, I'm going to show y'all the video that I made almost two years ago and never edited the video because they turned out pretty bad, but they work. So here you go. All right, everyone. Today we are building something, creating something, making something. We're doing something that I should have done. My hands look dirty. That I should have done a while ago and is making like a car ramp. Because my car, even though it's bagged, I still can't get a jack up under it. So I'm gonna make like a two level car ramp out of this two by six so that I can actually drive my car up on it and jack it up. So all I have here is like 70 inches of wood. So I'm gonna do two level, like I said, the bottom level is gonna be 21 inches the top level is going to be 14 inches so that will use all of my 70 inches so let's get that cut and I want to like angle the edge like a 45 to make it easier to roll up on so we will see how we figure that out but right now let's get this measured let's get it cut without cutting our fingers or toes off and let's get it together If you don't have the place, you live in an apartment complex, a condo, or something like that with a bunch of old people that likes to call the cops and complain on you, you can buy the wood at Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever store you have locally, and they should have a cutter. So if you buy a piece of two by six or two by fours or whatever the case may be, you can find the associate in that area and you can ask them, hey, I need this wood cut into, you know, um, 221s and 214s or whatever your specification is for your cutting so if you don't have the ability or the space to cut you can have home depot or lowe's or your local hardware store cut it for you if they have the capability so being said make sure you have your ppe your personal protective equipment on you know your safety glasses your boots you know so on and so forth so make sure you have that on you cut off your finger some stuff fly in your eye if you harm yourself in general watching my video doing what I'm doing, you're not responsible. So make sure you protect yourself, wear your PPE, your personal protective equipment. Now I'm using my daughter's old kitchen set table set to put this on because I don't have any horseshoes or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, my three cuts. So I pulled out my miter saw and I don't think this is the best idea, but I have it turned at a 45 degree angle. This technically should sit up flat against the bar, but clearly it is too high. So this is not the best idea. I'm going to say don't do this, but I'm going to try to see how it works. Let's see how this goes. I don't think very well. And of course, if you don't care about the 45 angle degree cut, like most of y'all probably won't, then you can just skip all this. Close enough. So let me do this a few more times and I'll be right back. I'll say find another way to do it with a miter saw unless you have one that can actually do it because these cuts look a little jacked up but I got to get these apart but I'm going to run with it and continue on just don't worry about the 45s unless you can have somebody cut them for you I 
I mean, they're a little snaggy-tooth, but whatever. Let's get these drilled in. I'll probably do two in the front, two in the back, and then two in the middle to make sure they don't go anywhere. So I'm going to measure it out and get them screwed in. Right now I'm going to drill a couple of holes. They're going to be uh, countersunk. That way the heads of the screws will sit under the surface of the wood. I'm using two and a half inch uh, deck screws so that should penetrate pretty good without going all the way through the bottom. So I always do opposite corners and that way after those two are in it keeps it from shifting. So just a little word of the wise. And there we go. They are together. It didn't puncture through the bottom with the two and a half inch screws. So now let's go see if it actually fits under the car with it aired up in the front because i didn't check it beforehand so that's about 50 psi let's take it up to about 100. oh they just barely fit So it's on the ramps. I have additional height. Let me go get my full size jack for my Yukon. I think it's a three ton. And let's see if it fits under there. And it fits with plenty of room. If you need some ramps to get the car up a little bit off the ground and you got some, we probably can do it with some two by fours, to be honest with you. I like the two by sixes because it's a little bit wider, get a little bit more tire contact patch on it. Until next time, if you need, to make some simple ramps to carry around or you get your car and lift it off the ground, especially if you are on pull loads or something like that, this may be the route for you. Just make sure that you measure them. Make sure that they are long enough because if your car is really, no, really low, you may need like a 30 inch piece. So that way the first, the second tier will be out above us, uh, beyond a certain point. That way you can drive up on it and get the car to lift up. Otherwise, you won't be able to get up under the car. So verify that before you invest any money i got lucky on this one but hey until next time i'll catch you guys later peace